welcome to Locally Sourced. We are here today to talk about the very important topic of recycling. I'm Victoria DeLonardo, the Recycling Coordinator at the Putnam County Department of Health, and I'm here today with Robert Morris, the Director of Environmental Health Services at the Department of Health. Now, recycling is very important because it helps us to reduce the amount of waste we put out, and it also helps us to conserve our resources. So when we say recycling, we are talking about the four R's of waste reduction. So have you heard of the four R's, Rob? I've, you know, for over the years, I've heard of the three R's, and I heard that there's a, a new R that has been added. Um, can you explain how, how it happened, you know, or what happened? Sure. So the three R's that you're familiar with are reduce, reuse, recycle. And the fourth R that was added is recover. So reduce is we want to reduce the amount of materials that we use. So we use less water bottles by using a reusable water bottle, or we buy a large jug of water instead of a case of water. So for reusing, like I said, we use a reusable water bottle, or we use a reusable grocery bag at the grocery store. And then recycling is we recycle the item. You, it goes to a facility, and it's, it's created into something else. And our recovery is when the items are put in an incinerator and that is used for energy. So the recovery factor when we recover the material it's taken and it's made into it was made with energy and now the energy is going to be taken back out to be used in a useful and a beneficial m manner? Yes so it helps to power homes so there's a recovery center in Westchester and there's a recovery center in Dutchess County so that helps provide power to the homes in those areas. So at your, at your home, um, you have usually curbside recycling. So in curbside recycling, there are some items that people are used to putting in. So first, there's plastics. Any plastic between one and seven can be put in your curbside bin. Um, that's excluding styrofoam that's not generally recyclable in our area. So on the screen, you can see that there's plastics. So there's a, you know, a milk jug, a water bottle, a laundry bottle, items like that. They have numbers on the bottom. Those can be in your recycling bin. Then there's cans. So cans, um, you, know, the held, you know, tin cans that held your food, soda cans, things like that. If they held food or drink, you want to make sure that you rinse them out. And then there's glass. So glass jars and glass bottles go in your recycling bin. And then there's also paper and cardboard. So there's two different ways that curbside recycling is done. There's dual stream, where they keep the paper and the cardboard separate. So that's all the fiber materials. And then your other items, so your plastic, your cans, and your glass, go in the other bin. OK, so now I have curbside recycling at my home. Do all waste haulers have to pick up recyclables? Or is it their choice? Can they decide not to pick up recyclables? All waste haulers need to, to pick up recyclables. In Putnam County, it is the law that you recycle anybody who generates waste. So a person in their home or a company or a school, as long as they generate waste, they need to separate their recycling from their garbage. And the waste hauler, by law, has to take that recyclable? Correct. Yes. Um, so. Alongside the dual stream, we also have what's called single stream. And it's a little bit easier for um, the homeowner or the resident because all of those items that we talked about earlier, the plastic, the cans, the glass, and the cardboard and paper can all go in one bin and you have one pickup at your, at your curbside. Well, that seems a lot easier oh, yes. than separating into the papers and into the metal, plastic, and glass, as you were saying. So that seems like a... A better is is that a better way to go? It's not necessarily better, but it's e definitely easier for the the consumer and the resident to do a single stream recycling, and that's what most of what that's most of the recycling that we have in Putnam County. So there's also some other ways to recycle and throw out your garbage. Um, it's called pay as you throw, um, and there are some towns around our area that do this. So it's a recycling center. You bring your recycling and you bring your garbage, but when you bring your garbage, you have to pay either by bag or by weight for the amount of garbage that you have. So it would seem if that's a method, the more I recycle, actually the less I'm paying, I'm doing 
the most for the environment, I'm also doing the most for my pocketbook. Exactly. So recycling is the right thing to do, not just for the environment, but it also helps your pocket. Cool. So, yeah. um, so there's one item that we find a lot in the curbside bins that should not be there. It is a plastic, but it's film plastics. So your grocery bags, um, any, any type of filmy plastic. But earlier, you're saying plastic needs to be recycled. Why can't I recycle the so, bags with the recyclables? So once you put a film plastic in your curbside bin, um, that is then brought to a materials recovery facility, or a MRF, and at the MRF, it's, it's separated. And sometimes those plastic films will get stuck in the machines. So the whole operation needs to shut down, and the worker has to go in and untangle the bag. So it, it's dangerous for the worker, and it also costs the MRF money because they have to stop everything. So we want recycling to be as efficient and as cheap as possible, so we want to make sure that we take those plastic bags and put them where they belong. Okay, so if I can't put them with my recyclables, I'm sure that you're going to go there. What do I do with these plastic bags? So you can bring your plastic bag to any large retail or grocery store, and they have a collection bin out front. It's usually by the, by the carts, um, and up on the screen is a list of the 25 um, uh, retail stores in Putnam County where you can bring your plastics for recycling. Do the stores by law have to have these receptacles? Yes. These, these stores that are listed, they meet the criteria of, of stores that are required to recycle and accept recycling from their customers. Okay. Well, I, you know, I know metals go back into metals and glass gets broken down into different... What happens to the plastic bags when they get recycled? So the plastic bags are melted down and they are either turned into new plastic bags. Sometimes they're made into crates or even recycling bins. Um, most of the time they are uh, melted down and mixed with sawdust to create a composite lumber, something like Trex. So it's used for building uh, decks and, and benches and, and pergolas and pretty, pretty items for your backyard. Yep. So it's very important that we recycle plastics um, because every piece of plastic that's ever been made is still here. We, it's, and, it's, and it's a problem for the environment when, we do, when that happens. Because um, even though a lot of us recycle and we try to recycle, some of it ends up in nature. So once it goes into nature, it, it becomes a problem for animals, it becomes a problem in the water stream, and then it, it will affect us. So there's garbage, garbage and floating plastic in the ocean. That's very interesting. I had heard that, that as you said, all plastic still exists. It just gets broken down to small and small pieces. Right. So it never leaves the environment. So that would make it so important to recycle plastics, to capture all the plastic that we can. That's right. Because once, once like you said, it breaks down and it gets smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. so animals think it's food, so then they eat it. And sometimes that kills them because they're not able to eat actually nutrient-rich foods. They have plastics instead. So... We have a game here of items, this, that bucket that you have. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's about the same amount of garbage a person would accumulate in a day. So it's, a, it's, it's about four gallons worth of, wow. of garbage. Um, but not all of it is actually garbage. So a lot of it can be recycled. Some of it is garbage. Okay. And then some of it is food waste. So that food waste we'll talk about in a little bit. But if you want to take a, a look at this, sure. and see what, what, we can, what we can figure out from there. Okay, I would like to. Okay, you said plastics. I see a plastic cup. It has a number on it, a number six. So this is definitely recyclable, correct? Yes. Okay. Okay, a magazine. It's um, paper. Yes. Definitely recyclable. But the plastic wrap. How would I know that this plastic wrap... Is recyclable or not? So when you look at the plastic wrap, sometimes they have a number on them. If, if it's either a number two or a number four film plastic, it's recyclable. But if it doesn't have a number, if you stretch it and it stretches instead of tears, it's a recyclable plastic, okay. film plastic. Okay. Now I have a, a hanger, <coughs> plastic, so I can recycle. Not necessarily. If you have a plastic, but you can't find a number, so I don't, there's no number on that one. No number? No number, so it's garbage. Okay. 
milk jug. Now, this looks like it's coated with some sort of wax or plastic. Is this recyclable? It is recyclable. Uh, just recently, we've been able to recycle these at our local MRFs. Um, so we can put these in the recycling bin, our curbside bin, but we need to make sure we rinse them out beforehand and we take off the plastic top. And that goes okay. in, if it's the size of a quarter, it can go in your bin. Otherwise, it goes in the garbage. Okay, now I have, it's a coffee grinds. It came in, it looks like plastic, but it looks like it's something else too. What would I do with this? So this is a laminate material. So it has plastics and metals mixed together and different types of plastics, so it's garbage. There's no way for them to separate that once, okay. we're, once we're done using it. Okay. Now, I have cardboard, but it has a little plastic window. So this whole piece is recyclable. Okay. The, uh, the, pla the paper recycling, uh, those, th those companies have learned to deal with the, the plastic windows. Okay, great. Toothpaste, it's cardboard, but it has shiny, it's shiny. Is this composite or is this recyclable? That's not a composite, it's still recyclable. Okay. Chopsticks. Chopsticks. Okay. Recyclable? No. Well, the paper on the outside paper. is recyclable as long as there's no food on it. Okay. And the chopsticks, if you can break them up, they can go in your backyard compost pile. So we'll okay. talk a little bit more about composting later. Okay. Now, another hanger, I, uh, but this one has a number on it, so recyclable. Correct. Cardboard bowl, recyclable? If it has food on it, it is garbage. So once it's soiled, it goes in the garbage? Yes. Okay. Okay, plastic bag. I don't see a number. I do see a sign that says, actually, please return for recycling. Yes. So this is recyclable. That is recyclable. Another bottle has a number. This is recyclable. That is recyclable. But with bottles like that, you want to make sure you take the top off. And like okay. I said earlier, if that's larger than a quarter, it can go in the recycling bin. Otherwise, it goes in the garbage. Okay. Oh, I have a soiled diaper. So a soiled diaper is garbage. Garbage. There's no safe or, you know, there's no safe way to get rid of a diaper other than the garbage. Okay. Now, aluminum foil, mm -hmm. from what I'm hearing, it's clean, it has been clean, so this would be recyclable if it's clean. If it's clean. If it had food waste or the, when you cook with it, the, that Yeah, if it gets rubbed. stuck on. Um, yeah, if you have food that's stuck on there that you can't get off, it goes in the garbage. It goes in the garbage. Okay, have a... Magazine and paper, this is definitely recyclable mm -hmm. from what you've been telling me. Seltzer, recyclable? Yes. So again, if the, with the, the lid, just uh, unscrew that and since it's smaller than a quarter, that would go in the garbage. Okay. Barry, I'm looking for a number, I see a number one, so this would be recyclable. Yes. Okay. Looks like it's one of those plastic that were used, but it actually has a number on it. Yes. So what you told me, so that is recyclable. Right, at the grocery store or the big retail store. Okay, I think that's what we have. <laughs> okay. Um, so along with the plastics that we have, the plastics and the garbage that we went through, there's also some food waste that we have. Um, so in, in the bin, there why, should be some food. Why is food waste important? Well, food waste is important because there are, uh, there's a lot of factors in getting the food to the grocery store and then onto your table. And when we throw away food, we waste all of those resources beforehand, and then we're wasting the actual food that we have. 
and it's nobody likes to waste food. Nobody wants to throw away food. Um, so by reducing your food waste, you reduce the amount of resources and energy used to get that food to you, and you're also making sure that it's being used properly and you're eating it. Um, so with food, we have a food recovery hierarchy um, that the EPA has put out. And um, to reduce our waste, it's easy to follow that hierarchy. I had, I had read that food actually is a large component of, of the waste stream. Is that true? Y yes. Um, physically, it doesn't take up a lot of space in your garbage, but by weight, it's the bulk of your garbage because it's usually wet and it's, that makes it very heavy. So when that goes to your garbage hauler and they take it away, it costs them a lot of, you know, it takes a lot of gas and energy to move that food waste from your home into the garbage, either the landfill or the incinerator. So once, if you have food that goes in the landfill, it sits there, it creates greenhouse gases, it takes up a lot of space. Okay. If it goes to the incinerator, because it's so wet and heavy, it takes a lot of energy to burn that garbage. So you're not getting as much out of it as you would if, you know, if it weren't food in there. Okay. So, so I'm going to go look and see. Yes. I'm going to go into. So the. Um, reach. Reach one in. Of, one of the ways, or the next. I think everything's falling here. <laughs> All the, right. The first uh, line on the food recovery hierarchy is source reduction. So that is by, you know, only purchasing what you're going to need for the week. Um, ways you can do that are by creating meal plans and only sticking to your shopping list, not going off of that list. Okay. So after source reduction, we have feed hungry people. So once you feed your family and you know that you have some food that you're not going to eat, um, if you have uh, packaged foods or whole, whole fruits and vegetables, whole produce, um, you can find somewhere to donate those to. So you can find a local food bank um, or a soup kitchen and donate those items. They might not accept them, but they might be very happy to accept them also. Okay. Yes. So let me go look and see what you have. And without getting a little crowded here, okay, I have in here, it uh, looks like string beans. String beans. Now, these string beans definitely <laughs> should be compostable. Yes. Um, so, Food that is compostable includes uh, fruits and vegetables, those fruit and vegetable scraps that you have, eggshells, coffee grounds, tea, uh, tea leaves, and the bags too, like tea bags too. Um, those are all compostable. Okay. So we can put that in our compost bin. All right. So before we hit composting, okay. um, after we feed, try to feed our hungry people. Okay. Um, if you have leftover food that is, you know, not, not going to last very long, you can try to feed it to animals. So if you have chickens in your backyard, you can feed your food scraps to your chickens, or you can um, find a local farm that has animals that might be willing to accept your extra food waste. So once we get past all of that and we still have food left over, we can do the backyard composting or vermicomposting. Vermicomposting? Right. Vermicomposting is composting with worms. So it's actually very, it's easier to do for a, an apartment dweller or somebody who lives in a condo or a townhouse because you don't need a lot of space. You can do it in your basement or in your, back, in your gar garage. Where would I get worms? <laughs> <laughs> um, you can order them online. You can actually order a whole kit. So it has the bin for your worms and, you know, with the, the, the right... Um, you know, the right components, and then you can also get the worms with it. Okay. Yes. So now, the, do the worms, worms multiply or just have to buy more worms? Yes. The worms, as long as you keep it healthy, so as long as you're feeding them the right types of food, um, the worms will stay healthy and they will multiply and you'll have plenty of worms to keep eating your food. Okay. Yes. Very interesting. So, other than the vermicomposting, there's your backyard composting. Um, so that's why we're getting all this, this food ready. Okay. Uh, so like we said, the, the fruits and the vegetable scraps can go in your backyard compost. Okay. Okay. So let's so continue. Strawberries, fruit <laughs> yep. can be composted. Okay. Banana, it's compostable. composted. Okay, now I have a drumstick. 
Now, you didn't really mention meats? Correct. So meats and bones and anything that would be very fatty, like meat, dairy, bones, we want to keep out of our compost pile. Those attract animals and they also take a really long time to break down in your backyard compost. So those are best going in your garbage. Oh, it just goes in the garbage? Yes. Okay. Okay, carrot? Carrot. Compost. Compost. Okay, it looks like I have a hot dog. Now, according to you, this meat, fat, go in the, in the trash? Yes. Okay. Okay, something we haven't discussed, I have a donut. A donut. A, okay. Well, we know a donut is very fatty. It's very greasy. Yes. Um, so that would be one reason to keep it out of our compost pile. Another reason is because it's very sweet. Really sweet items will attract wasps, wasps and you don't want wasps in your, in your pile. Okay. Okay, looks like broccoli. Right. Compost. Asparagus, Asparagus, which I don't like. <laughs> Corn? Corn. Compost. Yeah, we want to break this up a little bit before you put it in the compost. Why is that? Well, the smaller your items, uh, the faster your compost will break down. Okay. So once we have all of our fruits and vegetable scraps from our kitchen, uh, what we can do is we'll go into the compost pile in our backyard. Okay. So we have to um, add more than just our fruit and vegetable scraps. So in composting, there are browns and there are greens. These are the greens because they're fresh. The browns are items that would be um, dried and they're brown. So things like straw, dried grass, leaves, those are your browns. So when you're building your compost pile, you want a layer of browns and then you can put some of your greens and then you put more browns. It sounds like a lot of work. Is it really a lot of work? It's really not. It sounds like a lot, but once you get into the hang of things, it takes 10 minutes a week to maintain your compost pile. Okay. Yes. Okay, so, I ran out of items. Okay. <laughs> so um, there are different types of compost piles that you can have in your backyard. Um, um, one of them is just having a pile that you throw things onto in your backyard. That's if you have a lot of space. If you don't have a lot of space, um, you can buy a compost bin. Um, which the health department sells. We have some of those. We sell those at cost. Um, where it's enclosed and it's black so it keeps the, the heat in and it helps to break down your items faster. So how much would that be if I wanted to buy it? It's $55. $55. Yep, and you can okay. contact the health department and we'll get one ready. I'll get one ready for you. Okay. Yeah. So um, the order form for the compost bin can be found on our website, as can all of this other information. So everything we spoke about today um, can be found on our website, which is putnamcountyny.com slash green dash Putnam. So we will to find all of that information. All right. <laughs> so that's all the time we have for today. So I want to thank Robert Morris from the health department. And I want to thank the volunteer crew at, at the Carmel Public Access Studio. Thank you.